addendum. That's right. Uh, my lovely imps, last night I reacted live to the ContraPoints video called The Witch Trials of J.K. Rowling. And I actually quite overall enjoyed the video. Uh, I had a few critiques, um, one of which was relatively substantial. Um, but I wanted to say there was something that I didn't talk about very much that I have been thinking of. Um, I've been I've been thinking back on, and I'm not sure like how to feel about it. Um, and I wanted to talk about it and make like a little bit of an addition. Uh, to what I was talking about um, last night. And basically, I've seen a lot of people, and actually my own partner uh, brought up to me some issues that they had with the ending of the video. And uh, I, I have to say I agree with some of the criticisms that are being levied against the end of the video. Um, but I still have some... I still have some thoughts about it. So, basically, at the end of the video, spoiler alert uh, for a two-hour political video essay, not really a spoilering type of thing, but at the end of the video, ContraPoints comes to the conclusion that probably the best thing that anybody could do is just block J.K. Rowling on Twitter. And... Now, at the time, I didn't really think all that much of it. In the moment, I didn't really think that much of it because I was still thinking about the previous two hours of the video, which I think the previous two hours were, by and large, the vast majority, fantastic and phenomenal. And at first, my sort of thing was uh, I, I interpreted the ending as sort of ironic, uh, that, that J.K. Rowling was echoing or not J.K. Rowling, that, that ContraPoints was echoing what J.K. Rowling does, which is sort of hide what is really meant. Uh, this, this like, putting on a veneer of civility. Um, but as I thought about it more, I don't know if that was actually true. I don't know for sure if that was what was intended by the ending of the video, because as I thought on it and I read other people's critiques, I realized that I perhaps was being a little bit too charitable with the ending, given certain things that were stated. Um, the, 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 the blocking, okay, so basically the argument and I'm gonna try and, and steal man ContraPoints' argument here and I'll go from there. The argument was basically, well, JK Rowling is a right-wing woman. Ultimately, she isn't the constructor of patriarchy. Uh, therefore, we should be careful not to just make her the, uh, the convenient effigy uh, uh, that that represents the whole of a truly hateful movement. Uh, uh, ContraPoints, in fact, made the argument that, like, most of the devils that, uh, that movements react to happen to have been mostly white women in the past. And, uh, there is truth to that. I mean, Anita Bryant is one of them, um, and, uh, and, uh, oh my god, I'm blanking on the other lady's name. Why am I blanking on her name? It doesn't really matter. The other lady uh, are two of the mo of the examples that were covered specifically in the video. And of course, there are very frequently white women who act as basically a poster child for a hate movement that is much larger than them. And I think there's truth in that. However, I also have to point out um, that no one, no single person or entity or institution builds patriarchy. No single institution or individual builds transphobia ever. There is never just one person. But J.K. Rowling, uh, J.K. Rowling has an absolutely unbelievably large uh, platform. Like, she did, yeah, she tried to make the argument that the devil was the Republican Party, um, and Republican lawmakers, not J.K. Rowling, but actually, as far as, um, as far as, uh, like, 
spreading a hateful message, I actually think that J.K. Rowling is more impactful than most Republican lawmakers. Obviously, she's not more, you know, uh, powerful than the entire GOP, but um, J.K. Rowling is infinitely more influential than Michael Knowles. J.K. Rowling is more influential than Matt Walsh. J.K. Rowling is more influential than libs of TikTok. J.K. Rowling is one of the most, the world's most influential anti-trans people. She has, ra she has her, her reach and her influence as a pillar of pop culture um, is, is not to be understated. And I think that there's a part of that that is missed. And the more that I thought about that ending, um, the less that I thought that it was uh, ContraPoints just kind of making a like making a twist on the idea that like you should you should you know that that all of these people hide what they actually mean in civility, and more just that like there was a there was a mis a a, a sort of misanalysis that was applied at the end. Um, because I don't think that blocking J.K. Rowling on Twitter would actually do anything at all. Because J.K. Rowling's influence isn't just on Twitter. That's how she sort of gets the news out of what she's doing. But her influence is the fact that anytime she tweets anything, anytime she says anything publicly, every single news media organization on the planet will report her words on it. Even if she didn't have a Twitter anymore, even if nobody listened to her Twitter, if she just made a public statement via a press release, it would be reported in every single magazine on the planet. Um, which is a lot, um, as it turns out. And... I don't know. I felt like after I thought about it a little more that I had some that I I may have I may have sort of misread what was being said there. And also to be fair, I was pretty tired. I was like hours into a react at that point. So I feel like I may have done a little bit of a an a, a, I was thinking about other aspects of the video and I didn't really take enough time to think about how, what what the ending was actually trying to say. Um and there's another part of it too, which is that, and this is the part that I, I really hope this wasn't the case, but as I reviewed the ending again, um, I realized that um, part of the reason why there's a conclusion that we shouldn't, we shouldn't worry as much or we shouldn't fixate as much on JK Rowling was specifically so that ContraPoints could levy a further criticism at Vosh. And that was what really started to bother me, um, which was like, oh no, did ContraPoints like, like intentionally or unintentionally undermine the overall message of the video um, in order to sort of like make the criticism against Vosh hit harder? And I feel like I kind of want to watch it again real quick. Do you, so, Let's let's do that real quick and I want to review and see if my thoughts on it if my memory of it is fair um, We're just gonna watch the last few minutes of it um, and and just sort of I Don't know Yeah, I just want to review it. Let's so let's review the last like few seconds of it. Okay Because it's like right Where is it here? Where is the ending? Here we go. We're gonna go back Let me see here. Here we go. I'm just gonna go right here. Here we go, the last bit. People coming forward, I find cause for doubt. Yes. In the meantime, while we're, while we're trying to get through to the decision makers, we have to try to limit the harm. And that means reducing or keeping down the number of people who transition. And that's for two reasons. One of them is that every one of those people is a person who's been damaged. But the second one is every one of those people is basically, 
you know, a huge problem to a sane world. Like if you've got people that, and whether they're transitioned, whether they're happily transitioned, whether they're unhappily transitioned, whether they're detransitioned, if you've got people who've dissociated from their sex in some way, every one of those people is someone who needs special accommodation in a sane world where we re-acknowledge the, the truth of sex. So deranged, by the way, insane. That is Nazi rhetoric, like no ifs, ands, or buts, but we're not here for that. To wrap this up, is the backlash against JK Rowling a witch hunt? No. Unequivocally, no. It's very thoroughly deserved. But I will say this. A movement can't get along without a devil. And across the whole political spectrum, there is a misogynistic tendency to choose a female okay, yeah. devil. Whether it's Anita Bryant, Hillary Clinton, Marie Antoinette, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, or JK Rowling. And there's always going to be people who seize on any opportunity to be misogynistic. So... Okay, let's so keep going. I would advise trans people and our allies to keep in mind that JK Rowling is not the final boss of transphobia. She's not our devil. The devil is the Republican Party, the conservative party. The devil is patriarchy. It's the right-wing men who will be the ones to put gender-critical theory into brutal practice. Anita Bryant, Posey Parker, and J.K. Rowling are, to borrow a term from TERFs, handmaidens. TERFs are the real handmaidens. They're useful idiots who put a concerned female face on the patriarchal violence against trans people that will ultimately be enacted by right-wing men. I call on men to consider themselves decent human beings to call out the deviants among them and eradicate these monsters from society. And Megan Phelps Roper and centrists like her are wrong that civil conversation can resolve this. Call out the deviants among them and eradicate these monsters from society. People like Michael Knowles and Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump cannot be persuaded. They have to be defeated. As for what to do about J.K. Rowling, I'll defeat her, right? Defeat her, right? That should be the conclusion. Based on the rest of the entire video, that should be the conclusion. And this was something that uh, I think that maybe I was being, like I said, I, I missed an opportunity to to form a cogent critique that I think is important at the end of this video because J.K. Rowling isn't, uh, shouldn't be infantilized. J.K. Rowling is, is putting into practice um, the, 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 what is the wording that, that she uses here? Hold on, what's, I wanna get the exact wording. Um, here we go, let's just see. They're the useful idiots, hold on. It's the right-wing men who will be the ones to put gender-critical theory into brutal practice, but that's not true. J.K. Rowling is also putting gender-critical theory into brutal practice, because in the modern world, brutal practice includes laws that say that you can't have medication that's life-saving, laws that force you to detransition, laws that um, that make you go through disgustingly invasive um, psychiatric evaluation. So I just think she's just wrong. I think I completely misread the ending of this, and I actually have, I think that there is a fair room to strongly criticize this ending, especially because it seems like this ending was created only to be able or or was reshaped or bent in this way only to be able to take a stab at uh at vosh again which i think is kind of messed up and also another thing is again i can't help but sit here and go well um at the beginning of this video contrapoints makes a joke about killing about uh kill your shitty child I don't believe that ContraPoints truly believes that people should murder their children. That's a joke. Likewise, Vosh's misogynistic joke, uh, which is equally in bad taste, by the way, this is a video about how TERFs use save the children rhetoric um, against trans people, and TERFs also use uh, misogyny in bad faith 
uh, 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 as a as a shield in the same way that they use children in a shield, both of them have done an equal level of um, problematic joke here. And I think that this ending really, while, I, while I'm, the first part of this ending, I think I'm totally fine with. The, reminding people that JK Rowling is not and will never be the final boss of transphobia, uh, and that the GOP and patriarchy are larger issues, there are still, people who work and build patriarchy and they do it together the gop is a large organization made up of many individual people it has uh foot soldiers it has managers it has you know colonels and generals so to say um and jk rowling is unabashedly one of them jk rowling is unequivocally one of the foot soldiers what well, not just one of the foot soldiers she is a major player in the adv in the excuse me i got a hiccup in the advancement of um of transphobia worldwide so anyway i didn't want to make this too big of a thing i didn't want to make it like uh um i don't know i didn't want to make it uh, like, uh, I don't know, I, I don't know, I, I didn't want to make it like a whole other thing, but I felt like it was necessary, uh, to revisit the ending, because I, uh, I saw, I, basically because other people brought forward a critique that I actually do think is fair, um, I don't think that Rowling should be infantilized, and I don't think that she should be minimized. And I also don't think that Rowling is like that there is any truth to the idea that Rowling is being chose be chosen as a as a devil because of misogyny. Um, in fact, I think that that plays a smaller role than I than the fact that she's just constantly constantly promoting transphobia that she is constantly funding supporting uh and using her absolutely enormous platform to advance transphobia so yeah uh again i i want to be clear I still think that ContraPoint's video was very, very good, but I needed to revise my thoughts or at least share my thoughts uh, after getting some time to sit on them and think and think about them. Uh, I was thinking about this this morning. I was thinking about it last night. I was reading other people's uh, uh, takes on this. And I even, like I said, the most influential one was my partner uh, who came for, who, who came over and talked to me and was just like, hey, what do you think about this? Isn't, isn't it just the point that we shouldn't forget about the systems at large? Well, no, because the argument here is not just that we shouldn't forget about systems. It goes one uh, beyond. Again, I'll just play it again. This is such a short clip. But right here, it goes from, I would advise trans people- to Trans people and our allies to keep in mind that JK Rowling is not the final boss of transphobia. She's not our devil. The devil is the Republican Party, the conservative party. The devil is patriarchy. It's the right-wing men who will be the ones to put gender-critical theory into brutal practice. See, right there, that's where it crosses from just saying the GOP and patriarchy are the actual bigger struggles, which is true. The GOP is a, like I always say, a an abs, it is a, it is a millstone around the neck of the entire planet until we move beyond uh, the GOP and conservatism as a movement, until we can uh, defeat that, the whole world will be a worse place. Um, but then it goes to saying that like, no, actually it's only, it's, it's right-wing men who put these things into practice when that's just not true. It isn't just right-wing men. There are right-wing women in positions of, of doctor, of, of being doctors, of being decision makers. There are right-wing women like JK Rowling who, who are actively engaged in the brutal, uh, uh, unfolding of transphobia. Marjorie Taylor Greene. Lauren Bolbert, Bol Bolbert, Bobert. I, I, I think this is just a misstep. Yeah, I just, I just think it's a misstep.
Let's Anita continue. Bryant, Posey Parker, and J.K. Rowling. And again, Posey Parker is a, is an actual Nazi who is organizing on the street rallies. Like Posey Parker isn't even just a Twitter poster. She doesn't even get her word out on Twitter. She goes and organizes protests in person. R to borrow a term from TERFs, handmaidens. TERFs are the real handmaidens. They're useful idiots who put a concerned female face on the patriarchal violence against trans people. But also, that's not what useful idiot means. JK Rowling isn't a useful idiot. JK Rowling knows what she's doing. JK Rowling hates trans people. It's beyond obvious. JK Rowling isn't a useful idiot at all that will ultimately be enacted by right-wing men. I call on men to consider themselves decent human beings, to call out the deviants among them, and eradicate these monsters from society. And Megan Phelps Roper and centrists like her are wrong that civil conversation can resolve this. Call out the deviants among them, and eradicate these monsters from society. People like Michael Knowles and Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump cannot be persuaded. They have to be defeated. As for and again, then now listen to this ending, and and I'll so I think this I think this ending here will solidify why I needed to do this little addendum. For what to do about J.K. Rowling? Honestly, let's all just block her. Open up Twitter right now. Go to her profile and just block her. Problem solved. Like, don't harass her, that doesn't help. But also, I wouldn't wait for her to change. But also, actually though, here's the thing. The earlier point of this video is that actually pieing Anita Bryant did help. Putting a pie on Anita Bryant, which is undeniably a form of harassment, did help. Uh, disrupting uh, uh, racist feminist meetings uh, and, and anti-lesbian meetings did help. That's the entire point of this video. So I just, I think that, I think ContraPoints just messed up the ending. Like, I, I don't know. I just think this ending is messed She's up. She's gone down what I call the bigotry whirlpool. The deeper you go in, the harder it is to leave. For the same reasons that it's hard to quit a cult or scam. To quote video essayist Dan Olson. Anyway. There's, uh, let's, we can listen to One this One of the most quick. insidious elements of a confidence scam is that the victims who invested the most are often the most passionate defenders because shame is a powerful force in the human psyche and they can't bear the shame of admitting they were tricked. Reformed bigots have to face not only the shame of being dupes, but also the guilt of having devoted years of life to harming vulnerable people. This is something Megan, to her credit, faced head on. If we were wrong, then I had spent every day of my life industriously sowing doom, discord, and rage to so many not at the behest of God, but of my grandfather. I had wasted my life only to fill others with pain and misery. Most bigots cannot stand to face this moral sunk cost. It's why an obsessive bigot like Graham Linehan, whose all-consuming hatred of trans people has ruined his life, cost him his marriage, and left him alone to tweet about destroying gender ideology minutes before midnight on New Year's Eve, feels psychologically compelled to insist with ever more certainty that trans people are not just delusional or dangerous, but are all demonic perverts, an enemy so hyperbolically evil that they justify his self-immolating crusade. Right, but... Um, but I don't think ContraPoints is, would argue that Glinner is just a useful idiot. I think ContraPoints would, are, would correctly conclude that Glinner is one of the people that has to be defeated because he simply will not change, just like Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis. Do you see why I have an issue with this ending and why I feel, I felt like I needed to talk about it again? They took everything from me, you know. <laughs> He took my, he took my my family, you know. And I just said, "No, hang on a sec. Stop calling these women turfs. Stop sending them abuse. Let them speak." And for that, they they just destroyed me. Do you honestly feel destroyed? No, because because the one thing about this, the one thing about this that keeps me going is that I know I'm right. You know, 
I know I'm right. As long as he stays here, in the bottom of the whirlpool, he never has to face that he's ruined his relationships and wasted years of life because he just couldn't let it go. And if JK would, would ContraPoints make the same argument about Michael Knowles, about Donald Trump, and about Ron DeSantis? What is the, what is the factor that makes those people different? Because I would argue there really isn't one, that there isn't really a difference between J.K. Rowling, Glinner, and Donald Trump in mentality. There is a difference in respective types of power, but um, obviously Donald Trump is way more powerful than any of these people involved because he was literally the president. That's an incredible amount of power to have. But um, J.K. Rowling is not weak, and, uh, and J.K. Rowling is definitely more powerful than Michael Knowles. Like, I think that would be pretty easy to conclude. Rowling doesn't log off soon. This will likely be her fate as well. I, I guess what I'm really trying to yeah. say is, Harry Potter's dead to me. I'm switching to Twilight. Okay. Anyway, uh, I, I'm going to be completely honest. Upon reviewing this, I do think that uh, part of this, part of the problem with this ending was a desire to get an additional jab in at Vosh. However, I think the larger problem with this ending is just what we would like to call old school liberal brain. And I'm gonna just issue a, a try to be reasonable uh, 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 critique here, which is um, ContraPoints doesn't do electoralist content, okay? ContraPoints does not do videos analyzing laws, you know, analyzing in granular detail which laws are being passed when. Um, ContraPoints does videos about history and does videos about uh, uh, pop politics and videos about philosophy at times. Um, but often, ContraPoints will essentially defer a conclusion onto electoral politics, which is basically, well, the problem is the GOP, and the problem is Donald Trump, and the problem is Ron DeSantis, and not really these people who advance the interests of these groups. But I think that that's a mistake, because, well, how do you fight those groups? And how do those groups actually fight, fight their war? Well, the, the answer, of course, is not, it's not through electoral politics. That, that's a part of it. Uh, electoral politics is one part of their struggle. But keep in mind that most of the struggle is what they call culture war. It is indoctrinating people. It is ruining the lives of people. It is persecuting people. They have a mechanism by which they gain power, by which they force their interests into positions of power. It's not just electoral politics. And yet the ending is sort of deferred onto this very, very vague, we need to do something about the GOP. Well, what? Are, I mean, people already rejected the GOP in the elections and still the transphobic campaign is going harder than ever. The GOP, Donald Trump lost, and yet he's still uh, wielding hate all across the world. L often through people like JK Rowling, through people like Michael Knowles, and through the followers of those people who are inspired to random acts of violence. So, yeah. This is a, uh, uh, it's a weird problem. And I just wanted to make sure that I gave a more competent critique than I was able to do last night to this ending, because I do think this ending is lacking, uh, especially if you compare this ending to the messaging of the rest of the video, which the rest of the video makes a pretty solid argument that extra, uh, extra electoral action is absolutely necessary. Um, in fact, I think at one point, uh, Natalie even says in the video, um, uh, like, I, I'm leaving the center, uh, indicating, I, I, would, I would say, hopefully indicating, or at least, uh, yeah, indicating is fine, indicating that the 
the centristic, uh, you know, advocacy policy, politics is not enough. That there has to be uh, something more than just voting for Biden. There has to be something more than just uh, than just voting for the right Democrats in the hopes that the transphobia will go away. Because keep in mind that these the the, the factions that are aligned against trans people are actively disassembling democracy. They are actively making it more difficult for uh, for anybody but themselves to hold power. They play a very real politique. They are not afraid to use terror. They are not afraid to use bomb threats. They are not afraid to literally kill people. Again, I would point out, just to put a seal on this, I won't stay on this topic for much longer, um, but to put a seal on this, just remember how right-wing figures reacted to the obvious uh, a hate, hate-fueled shooting. The directly hate-fueled shooting on the gay bar in Colorado Springs. Um, when that happened, uh, all of the biggest right-wing figures, uh, basically said, well, maybe, well, maybe you shouldn't have groomed people. That's basically what their answer was. They don't, they're, they, they tacitly endorse explicit explosions of violence. That's what they're aiming for. They're stochastic terrorists. They want that type of violence. They are constantly driving a fear that leads their followers to act out in violent ways, to seize power physically. And we can't just beat that with uh, with a de deferring vaguely to electoral politics. We can't just beat that by, uh, by saying, well, you know, JK Rowling is just a useful idiot because she's not. She's a, she's a core part of this mechanism that produces their type of power. And this is something that I've talked about all the time in other topics. You all, my imps who are watching right now, by the way, if you are watching and you're enjoying this little uh, mini segment, uh, please make sure that you press like right away and also press subscribe and ring the bell. And if you're watching on YouTube, when this is inevitably posted on YouTube, leave a comment with your thoughts because I would actually really love to hear people's feedback and thoughts on this particular segment. Even though I always like to hear comments, I really want to hear what people have to think about this. But if you are one of my imps, you will know that I've talked about this all the time with regard to Christianity, with regard to Christian nationalism, with regard to the far right, that the way that they organize is very different than the way that Democrats go about things. Democrats uh, um, and, and hell, even the left, that the right has a very concrete uh, uh, a series of, of messaging structures. They have highly, I mean, they have access to churches for God's sake and churches promote people like Michael Knowles. Churches, uh, do you guys know, does anybody here know what TPUSA's main thing is? Do you guys know what TPUSA actually is? TPUSA isn't uh, even, they're not even, they're not like PragerU. PragerU is basically a media channel. TPUSA is a, uh, is a group that organizes churches. They are a networking organization. They bring together the leaders of, of far-right churches and they get them all in a building together so that they can all talk to each other about how they're gonna push their far-right politics onto the, onto the country. It is um, like literally the, <laughs> I've mentioned this before, the cult that I grew up in, their representatives go to TPUSA conventions and coordinate with other Christian nationalists. That's what TPUSA does. You can't just beat that with a vague deferral to electoral politics. You can't beat uh, a group that doesn't believe in democracy, that believes that they need to seize power by any means necessary, that is willing to disseminate stochastic terroristic material to all of their followers uh, and do it on a massive scale with just a, with just to block people on Twitter and let's focus on the real problems. Remember also, of course, that TPUSA had, I believe, I might be wrong about the number here, but approximately 38 buses of people that they specifically organized to get people to Donald Trump's rally on the day of January 6th. They knew it was going to be a big deal, obviously, and they specifically bussed tons of people there with a call, Patriots Must Rise Up. 
I'm serious. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to make sure that I, I, I said my piece on this ending because a lot of people had some feedback for me. A lot of people on social media had thoughts that I thought were valuable. And I felt like I, I didn't fully give the full analysis on the ending that I wanted to. So uh, there you have it. Uh, thank you for watching and thank you for hearing me out. I always want to make sure that I, I don't know, go the go the extra mile and get my thoughts out in a coherent manner uh so yeah